pronunciation is Jorge Vergua. <laughs> Thank you, Jorge. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, uh, hello everyone here and everyone there in live streaming. I think uh, there, there's a lot of people also watching, watching this. So first, uh, my name is uh, Jorge Vergua. I'm key account manager for, for Libellium and since uh, one year ago and uh, I'm gonna talk about the Smart Cities uh, project and the Smart Cities uh, solutions. Okay, first of all, uh, let, me, let, let me explain what Libellium is and what's the, the activity of Libellium, okay? Libellium designs hardware for wireless sensor networks, okay? This hardware allows us uh, to carry out different, uh, different installations and different uh, projects about smart cities, okay? We are a company, uh, actually, uh, we are, this is not update uh, data, okay? We are 40 people, more than 40 people, and uh, we have grown in, in 40 years uh, huge, hugely, okay? We are uh, located in Zaragoza, okay? And the Spanish, uh, the, the owners are Spanish, and we are located in, in, in Spain as well. Okay, just for you to have an idea about uh, the customers we work with, okay, we work with a huge range of uh, customers, such as uh, telecoms, such as universities, such as uh, other kind of customers, system integrators as well, okay. And we are present in the whole world, okay? We are in more than 45 countries. Actually, I think we are in more than 50 countries, okay? The turnover of, of Livalium is uh, more than 70% out of Spain, okay? So it seems to be uh, really good uh, details, really good figures for a Spanish company. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, sorry. And Let's start uh, with the with main presentation. Okay, uh, Libellium helps people to solve problems like that. Okay, there were uh, uh, forest fires in, in Australia. Okay, more than 100 people dead. Okay, a lot of uh, area blackened and, of course, losses. Okay, that's really important because 300, more than 300 million of US dollars of losses. This is huge. It's amazing. Okay. So how can we help uh, to reduce or to prevent from this kind of uh, fires? Okay, with sensor, uh, wireless sensor networks. Okay, with that. Okay, this is our, our technology. It's easier. I, I will I will I will explain later, but it's easy. Okay, this is a wireless module with sensor solar power so that we can install them in the trees and we can control the gases when a, a, a fire is starting, okay? So have you ever think uh, about um, all the networks we can see in a city? Uh, I mean, all the cities has different uh, connections, has different sensors and has even smartphones, even tablets, other uh, wireless components, okay? So uh, we can see that all the cities are, are connected, and within a city, there are a lot of components that must be connected, okay? So, not only in cities, but also in agriculture fields, but also in industries. Imagine all the uh, toxic gases in, in industries. We can control them and just send information to the cities in order to prevent from um, different uh, gases problems. Okay, also in logistics, tracking, tracking containers. Okay, we can help containers, we can help airports, ports, and other kind of uh, installations to track their contain uh, containers wherever they, they go. Okay, and of course, in relation uh, uh, to the fires of Australian fires, okay, disasters. Okay, I think this is the most important part of, of, of our technology. We also help people to prevent for uh, disasters and other problems in, in natural problems, okay? So I think we, we are able to see how smart city is not only connected with, with inner city, but also with other radiation centers, other agricultural, other um, fields, other components out of the city, but the smart city has to control 
this kind of uh, this kind of um, sensor, this kind of measure, this kind of parameters. Okay, it's really important for the smart cities uh, to have in mind what's going on out of the city, so that you can prevent some radiation problems, such as Fukushima ones, or I mean, control the uh, irrigation system out of out of the city. Okay, so. Focusing on smart cities, we can see that there is a huge range of applications where, where sensor and where technology must be used. For example, for smart parking. Why not using smart parking to control and to monitor the different uh, parking spots in the city? Okay? Why not control as well structural health? I mean, uh, historical monuments or other uh, bridges or something like that. We want to control if something has moved or, or it's important to know if, if there is going to be a disaster. Okay? How many of us, uh, the people who live close to the discos, are fed up of, of noise, urban, uh, urban noises? Okay? We can also help to carry out noise urban maps so that you can know where the most prob problematic uh, point in, in the city in terms of noise, okay? Also, traffic congestion, okay? We can control the vehicles and the pedestrians uh, thanks to the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi wi modules, okay? We can control as well smart lighting system, okay? With our intelligence and with the intelligence of our sensor, we can control the smart lighting system, okay? And other application, we'll see later, okay? Some other applications as, such as waste, waste management or intelligent transportation as well. But uh, I think there's a huge list of, of requirements for, for a smart city. It's, it's a real problem or it's a real opportunity. Okay? All this information has to be deal, has to be managed, and we have to extract really detailed information from that. Okay? So, okay, what's, a, what's a, the, the, the issue? Problem or opportunity? Okay, we think Illibelium is a huge opportunity. Okay, Illibelium, but the market as well. The market says that uh, with all these problems, like cost reduction, for, for example, right now uh, with the water waste, with the crowded cities, with the climate change. Okay, we have to do something related to that to improve our life. So the market says the same. Okay, there is huge. Figures like billions or tri trillions of uh, of uh, dollars in the following years, okay, that it has to be invested on on, on smart cities technology, okay. But what's the what's the key point? It's not a term of uh, figures uh, or economic figures, but also 50 billion devices in 2020. Oh, can you imagine? 50 billion devices around our, our cities, like sending information, sending parameters, environmental parameters, parking parameters, other different parameters. Well, it's going to be huge, and we have to deal with that, and we have to be able to manage all this information. Okay, so I think we, we can see that smart cities are able to take information and to take data from all the uh, parameters it generates, okay? What for? You will say, okay, what for? Maybe it's huge list of, of information, but we have to deal with that and, 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 and try to improve not only their management, but also minimize uh, the impact of, of the emission, environmental emissions, to offer better quality of life to the citizens as well, and of course, to reduce the costs. I think every, every uh, analysis is in relation to costs, okay? If you, uh, are able to improve the city, the city life and the quality of life, but you are not able to reduce good, the cost, but also you are increasing the cost, I think it has no sense, okay? But how? How can, from Libelio now, how can we uh, help to improve the life, to make better our lives, okay? With sensors, with our sensors connected to the internet, okay? With what? With Wasmod, okay, you will see here. I have a, I have Wasmod here. Okay, it's, it's almost the same, which appears here in the in the in the image. Okay, and this is Wasmod. This is uh, our our um, component, our device, where uh, we deploy our technology. Okay, 
you will see later how does it work. OK? Wasmo is the standard platform for the Internet of Things, OK? For the smart cities projects, OK? How does it work? It's, it's really, really easy. It has three different elements, and they are common to all IoT projects, OK? This is a sensor part. There is a communication part, and there is a, an information system. OK, so how, how does it work? OK, we have Wasmod, which is the communication part. OK, we can send information uh, via 3G, via GPRS, via Wi-Fi, via SIGBI. OK, uh, with that, we are able to ping here all the sensor boards. OK, over this sensor board, we can pin the different sensors so that we can carry out the measures we want, uh, we want to, to have, OK? So uh, with that sensors and with different sensor boards, we have different sensors. And with that sensors, we can have uh, different uh, parameters, OK? So uh, mm, I think the key point uh, about our technology is that uh, with WASMOD, our, our device, our main device, our reference device, we can send information, OK? from any sensor data to any information system by using any communication protocol, OK? We can swap easily this, this module, OK? If you, if you see, it's, it's, it's so easy. And we can change the Zigbee uh, by DGMS, by 3G, by Wi-Fi uh, module. So it's really, really easy to deploy different sensor, different application, different uh, smart city projects with, with the same technology. OK? OK, you will see here the OEM uh, um, device, OK? Uh, but we have an a, a end user uh, line, which is the uh, Wasmo plug and sense, OK? We know that. Um, that uh, our our customers need a final solution, so we need to provide to provide them with with uh, different enclosures, with different probes, with different communications, so that they can carry out the projects correctly, right? Okay, this is the Wasmo plug and sense uh, that I mentioned, and this is our meslium, the concentrator. Okay, we are only needing. Uh, a concentrator to gather all the data coming from the sensor and send this information to the uh, information system. Send the data of the sensor to SAP, to uh, ESRI, or other platform, software platforms to monitor the data. Okay? Our, our sensor, you will see later, a short, a brief demonstration, you will see later that they are easy to maintain, easy to deploy, and easy to be scalable. I mean, uh, you can swap the probes so that you can uh, put or place another sensor different from the one you placed it before. OK, this is our, our solution. This is uh, the profile of our, our solution. OK, you can uh, connect up to six probes within, within plug and sense, and they are solar power. You can see here, OK, the plug and sense is the same, which appears here, OK? So we will see later the data coming from, from these this sort of sensors. OK, so let's see what we can do with, with these elements. OK, uh, I'm going to focus right now in, in, in smart parking project. OK, uh, smart cities is, is a huge concept. Uh, we have different applications where, where we can use our technology. And smart parking is one of, of the main applications we can help people improve the li their life, and, and we can help people to um, reduce uh, pollution and other environmental uh, problems. Okay, we we have seen that the concept of cities is, is changing. Okay, mm, I, previously to this this uh, speech, I, I was talking to a guy, which uh, he's living uh, in the countryside. So um, I, I think people is starting uh, living in, in, in cities more than in rural areas, OK? So the parking scenario is really, really important. It's uh, a problem we have to control and uh, a problem we have to measure, OK? Uh, just uh, little, little uh, figures here, OK? Mm, the tons of CO2 generated by, uh, w while looking for uh, parking spots, and also the losses due to traffic delays, OK? There are huge, huge and really big uh, figures, and I think we have to take into account this this kind of of uh, numbers. Okay. Just uh, shortly. Okay. Um, who have you have you ever tried to uh, to find a, a parking spot and 
you didn't, you couldn't, okay? I think this is a, a common problem, okay? For example, in, in Manhattan, okay, 20% uh, of, of, of drivers, of citizens, uh, waste a lot of time looking for a parking spot, okay? From three to, uh, to 14 minutes searching for a parking spot. Okay, uh, maybe it's not that bad, but uh, if you can avoid uh, or prevent yourself from being 14 minutes looking for a, spark, a parking spot, I think it will be much better. So how can Livellium help this, uh, this, these problems? Okay, in, in, in today we are 800, people, um, 800 million of people uh, of passenger cars, and in the future it's going to be like a lot, a lot of um, in, increase. I, I mean, it, it, it's going to be huge figures as well. So uh, we have to design and we have to carry out a smart parking system uh, that helps everyone to find easier, easier way uh, a, a parking spot. Okay. So this is a labeling solution. Okay, with that we can help people to improve their lives and uh, to improve the uh, searching of, of, of uh, parking spots. Okay, um, this is uh, the figure of uh, the, our, the, our repeater, and this is the figure of a smart parking node. Okay, uh, with these two components, we can carry out typical installation of a smart parking system. Okay, it's easy. We are we have only to install them under the ground. Okay, and just switching uh, switch them on, on. Okay, so how does it work? These nodes, the ones of parking system, send the information to the repeaters. They are here. Okay, and the information coming from the sensor goes through the repeaters till the gateway, the concentrators. Okay, these concentrators send, send the information to the internet. Okay, so. Let's see a real case, a real project where we have deployed our, our technology. Okay, this is Smart Santander. Smart, uh, Smart Santander is a huge project based on, on Smart Cities projects. Okay, where our technology has been ins installed and where you can find different sensors from Livellium. Okay, this is the biggest Smart City deployment, more than 1,000 nodes. Okay, and, and the customer was uh, Universidad de Cantabria and Telefónica. Okay, this is smart parking project, but combined with environmental uh, control project. Okay, we were measuring CO, luminosity, temperature, and noise. Let's see some uh, some points of, of this installation and of this deployment. Okay, we, we were uh, facing uh, to different technical challenges. Okay, like like sensor calibration, like sensor placement, like deployment. Okay, you will see here people installing them. And this is a, a picture of, of the ground with a drilled uh, ground with, with the sensor, okay? And the uh, second part of technical challenges was the over the air programming. I mean, if you are going to uh, bury a, a sensor under the ground, you have to be able to program the sensor without touching anything. I mean, if you have a, a, a small layer of concrete over the sensor, you can't open the sensor, you can open the layer only to program the device. So what we do, okay, let's see. We design an over-the-air programming um, a module so that our device can be programmed with, with uh, over-the-air. I mean, uh, you were on your laptop, and you are on your laptop programming the uh, node, and you don't have to open anything. So it's easier to program, easier to update, and easier to deploy. OK, here we will see a picture of, of uh, the application, the, the mobile application uh, that people uh, used to use for, for, for seeking for a parking spot. OK, you will see here also number of uh, free parking spots, uh, empty parking spots where you can, you can park. OK, so it's, it's easy for them. Uh, they used to open your mobile phone, just launch the application, and once you are inside, you can, you can see all the uh, parking spots, if they are empty or they are uh, busy, OK? But this project uh, didn't uh, stay in, in, in smart parking system, but also in environmental control project, OK? 
um, due to uh, um, the possibilities that our technology offer, okay, we can combine the sensors, the smart parking sensors, with different uh, other sensors. Okay, so imagine in the repeaters of, of the parking sensors, you install different uh, sensors such as environmental sensors. Okay. Uh, with that sensor, we were measuring CO, CO2, noise, luminosity, and temperature and humidity. Right? Uh, with that, this is the uh, smart environment uh, board. Okay, it's almost the same that the one I have here. Okay, and it's installed here as well. So once you have it here, you plug the sensors and you start measuring all the data of CO2, uh, noise, luminosity, and and so on. Okay. Uh, what was the result? Okay, similar to the parking one, uh, we are able to see the yellow spots where uh, all the parameters from from the CO2, from the CO, from the temperature uh, can be can be seen. Okay, we are able to see here the temperature, the light, battery, and other parameters we we measure. Okay, let's let's follow with smart environment. Okay, but because you don't need really smart parking sensors for, for a smart environment. You can also install only smart environment sensors. OK? This is the gaseous sensor board, uh, which uh, is here. This is the complete sensor board, OK? Not only for CO, CO2, but also for solvent vapors, alcohol, and other, other gases. You will see here as well uh, the project we carry out only in terms of air quality sensors, OK? It was in, in Salamanca, which is a, a city in, in the north of, of Spain as well, and, but different from Santander. But uh, we installed there different sensors for uh, environmental monitoring and environmental control. Okay? We installed there seven sensors, or seven, seven uh, um, different sensors per node. Okay? The temperature, humidity, CO, NO2, ozone, noise, and dust. Okay? The devices were solar power, okay? You can install them and forget about the battery, forget about other issues you, you have, okay? You see here the uh, parking system or the par parking poles where we install the sensors, okay? They were right here, and inside the box, you, can, uh, you could see the sensor, okay? Uh, so the enclosure uh, was a challenge to be able to manage with this uh, parking pole. And the network optimization was also a challenge to be able to configure all the uh, network, all the mesh network, so that all the sensors can can listen to each other and can send the information. Okay, the other project we carried out with uh, environmental and uh, pollution sensors, okay, was the Serbia one. Okay, our customer was Ericsson. Okay, and we measure as well temperature, humidity, CO, CO2, and NO2. Okay, but this project was different. In the previous one, the, the sensor was fixed. Okay, so the sensor weren't able to, to move. Okay, in that one, there is another another plus, another another option, which is GPS. Okay, you can also connect with uh, to Wasmo the GPS module, so that you can know where the sensor is in every moment. Okay, so we install them with GPS and. Uh, not only for, for knowing the rigorous time uh, of arrival of buses, but also to know where the pollution, where the uh, environmental parameters were coming from. Okay? This is the, the, the enclosure our customer provides uh, for, for the sensor. Okay? And this is the, the main network they configure for, for, for the sensors. Okay, the sensors were sending information and um, afterwards an external database was managing and gathering this information and uh, uploading this information to the network, to the internet. Okay, the challenge is, okay, it's not, it's not that easy to be able to control mobile nodes, mobile devices, okay? Uh, all the time, you have to, to know where the, the node is, and you have to uh, be able um, to make the nodes independent. Okay, so here you have a picture of of uh, the sensors as well, sending information, sending information about the environmental parameters, sending information also to the mobile phone, so that the citizens can see in in their mobile phone what's the parameters, what's the the pollution at each moment, okay, thanks to the buses uh, moving all the, all the city along. Okay, but 
okay, we have seen two kinds of, of, uh, of projects, or smart cities projects, but we have other projects w you can deploy with our technology. I mean, um, taking advantage of, of uh, the smart parking system, for example, of the uh, environmental system as well, you can uh, uh, install other sensor or other components so that you can uh, reduce the uh, costs in terms of uh, picking the, the, the rubbish or picking the uh, containers and uh, make the containers be em being em empty. Okay, this is another application we have. Also, uh, as I mentioned previously, nice maps. Okay, with the sensors, with the same sensors, we can uh, control different environmental parameters. We can also control the noise, okay, so that we can carry out uh, different uh, noise maps, okay, so that we can set a limit uh, where, where uh, the police is, is, is uh, advised to, to go there because the, uh, the noise is, is too loud, and uh, you can control also the, the level in, in crowded zones, okay. Uh, also, taking advantage of, of the um, parking system, we can also carry out a Smart lighting system. What, what for? What for? For for being able to control all the time, depending on the daylight. Uh, here in in London, it's it's really changing uh, lighting. Okay, uh, so we can control all the um, time, all the um, uh, lighting system. Okay, this in terms of energy saving, this is really important because if you are if here in London, for example, is a, there is a, a sunny day, you don't have to uh, switch on the light. So why not using our technology to control the smart lighting system? Okay, uh, by the way, in the meanwhile, wh while I was s speaking, um, I, have, I have here our, our plug and sense node, okay? Our smart cities plug and, sense plug and sense node measuring different parameters, okay? You will see here, different uh, temperature, different humidity, uh, different um, microphone and, and other parameters, okay? We've, we've been uh, measuring these this, uh, parameters while speaking, and if anyone wants to see, uh, want to see this, this data here, um, afterwards I can, I can show you also this data. You will see here, at this moment, okay, let's, let's update. Okay, at, at this moment we are at uh, 22 degrees, uh, the humidity is 50% and the luminosity is uh, 41%. Okay, if, you, if we can uh, change or we can move this, the, the node, okay, we, we, we will be able to see different luminosity, different temperature and different humidity. Okay, so in short, we are able to see different connection, different application, and different uh, parameters we want to measure. And the smart city has to be able to manage this, this data. This, all this parameter has to be deal, has to be managed, has to be used for improve and take decisions. So um, these applications uh, are focusing on uh, making smart cities life much better. Okay. Apart from, from the applications uh, we have seen, we have other applications where, where we can install our devices. For example, for measuring the smart water. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, the smart water in, in out of the city, in, in the countryside, uh, for measuring also water leakages within a city as well, river floods, and to prevent from river floods, we can, we can do it as well by using our water presence sensor so that you can know if, if there is a liquid in, in, in some pipe or in some tube, okay? Also for smart measuring, okay, in the countryside you have, for example, photovoltaic installations. You have to control this installation, you have to see what's the radiation, the solar radiation there and what's the uh, behavior of this installation, and you can control it also with our technology. Also with the security and emergencies, okay? It's very important to, um, to have in mind um, the risk of, of uh, radiation centers and all the, um, all, the, all the stuff, okay? So that you can control and take decision, even if you are not there in, in, in the, in the uh, radiation point, you have to be, or you have to take into account that it's important uh, to know what's the level of, of radiation. 
that's uh, the the project we we carried out in in Fukushima. Okay, in Fukushima there was a huge huge problem because all the technicians were there uh, in order to measure the radiation level. Okay, they were exposing all the time to the radiation levels, so um, they were in risk, obviously. So what we uh, what did we do? Okay, we designed. In, in um, one month time, okay, we design a, a board for measuring radiation so that they can go there once, just placing the, the uh, smart radiation board and go back. Okay? Once they are back, you can measure and you can know all the time the radiation level without having to go there. Okay? It, I think it's really important uh, for, for the technician and for the technician's life. Uh, to be concerned about the uh, radiation level and, and not to go all the time there to, to measure. Okay. Uh, to sum up, uh, I think we have seen all the applications uh, that a smart city can 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 take and can need. Um, smart cities are, are growing every day, are taking part of this uh, change. I, I think it's a big change. Okay, and there will be. Uh, Another changes in the future. I, I think there, the, there's going to be some some further changes from here till um, maybe 30 years. And you you can know here, you can see here all the application apart from smart parking, apart from environmental monitoring and other uh, applications. You can see here uh, the whole applications we can carry out with our with our technology. Okay, always having in mind. The previous, uh, I, I showed you this, this slide previously, the uh, horizontal approach of our technology. We can send data using any communication protocol to any information system, data coming from any kind of sensor. Okay? I think this, the, this is a message we want to transmit that it's very important for, 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 the, for people to know that our technology is really, really horizontal. I mean, you can integrate a sensor, you can Integrate the sensor you want, you are required, okay? And with that, you can uh, carry out different measures and take decisions. It's it's the aim I think we are looking for in smart cities. Okay. Uh, finally, I've I've been talking about sensors, I've been talking about hardware, but where is Libel in the whole value chain? Okay, Libel is right here, just in the middle. It's it's like a small part of of the whole. Vision, okay. Uh, Liberium uh, is the uh, the one the one who provides the sensors, okay. But afterwards, there is another customers, another universities, another system integrators uh, who need to uh, add value to our solution. I mean, we are hardware manufacturers. We we don't use the data for anything. Uh, our our system integrators, our customers, are the one. Uh, who need to know this data, who need to deal with this data. For what? As usual, for the, the end users. Who, who are the, the end users? The end users, and just to conclude, uh, are the citizens. Because the technology is the, is the real easy part. We know about technology, okay? And we know that it's possible, it's feasible uh, to carry out this, this kind of projects. Coordination inside municipalities is, is also important, okay? Uh, dealing with, it, with this data is important as well to take a decision, to be able to manage all the uh, difficult situation, all the problems of the uh, real life of, of cities. But I think the, the end user of, of everything, citizens, of course. Why? Because they really feel uh, what you are doing with with their taxes, because they know that uh, this is a solution for them that they want to use, that they want to improve their life, and uh, they will uh, feel if uh, this solution is is safe, and because they feel also the benefit of our our technology. And I think if we go out of this O2 arena and yes pick the train or, or pick a bus and go to park this, uh, this bus of this car. And we are wasting our time, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, to park our car. We are not really getting the benefit. So I think the citizens 
are the ones who are the really, really uh, actors of, of this uh, of this film, and we want them to benefit from from our our technology. So thank you very much for for your attention. This is the questions time. If you have any questions, uh, here here are my contact details as well. So yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, the question that I have is: You have the sensor. You install them, for example, in the forest, and then later on, uh, probably uh, you need to do some kind of support. Or, yeah. for example, how do they work? The the power? Do they work with batteries? Do you have yeah. to change them? And mm -hmm. also the same for the ones that are underground. You have to open again another hole in the ground to remove it, install no. new batteries, and. So no. Okay. Yeah. Question. Okay. Thank you for for your question. Um, your name, sorry. Javier, Javier, okay, thank you. Um, well, uh, it depends on, on the configuration, okay? I, I mean, um, you can configure our devices with, with batteries, okay? Uh, there are two kinds of batteries for, for our devices, okay? Rechargeable batteries or non rechargeable batteries, okay? With the rechargeable batteries, you can install them with solar panel like that or external solar panel as well okay with that the support for for that maintenance is is really really easy like uh, okay it, it's working all the time till the body is, is down okay once the body is down you only have to open only have to open the the, the case and the enclosure and just replace the body okay it's 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 easy okay with the with the non rechargeable batteries okay imagine you are installing here in under the ground, okay? Uh, you drill it the ground and you install the sensor uh, right here, okay? So obviously, uh, the uh, non rechargeable batteries are, are bigger, are much powerful, so I think it's interesting to use uh, non rechargeable batteries. With that batteries, um, you can install them under the ground, just place a, a thin layer of concrete, and afterwards, maybe seven, eight years. After the installation, you can change the battery. Okay, okay. Mm, the installation I it's easy. It's like 15 minutes to drill the ground and just removing the layer is like maybe three minutes. Okay, it's not that easy. It's only for for um, for burglars or for for um, prevent from other stealing stealing stuff. Okay, so the battery, it's it's about. Three, four, five years, depending on the configuration. I mean, if you are configuring our devices to send information once per per second, okay, you are you are out, okay, because it it has no sense. But maybe once per minute, maybe once per five minutes, no problem. Any other question? Uh, I have a question about the um, smart parking. Mm -hmm. uh, w you were putting I the sensors under every parking space. Why not just why not just use the camera that sees several of the parking spaces and can tell if the cars are there or not? Why drill holes under each of them? Why not using cameras? You say okay. I think uh, taking into, into account that, uh, the cameras uh, have a range of, of, of view. I mean, uh, maybe the, the cost of, of cameras and I think much even much more the, the cost of the software for for the cameras to detect all the time the cars. I think it's uh, much, much um, more expensive than than our technology. Uh, this is hardware. This is an enclosure. This is uh, electronic devices. You know that it's not that that if you have have play with Arduino or something like that, it's not that that is expensive. Okay. I think it, it's much, much, uh, much easier with with our technology. Good night. You're talking about um, the price of the cameras. So this is supposed to be a little bit cheaper, I guess. What's the price? The price range of the product? Of of what? For let's say the smart parking, for example. How much a city? How much do they have to spend on that? Okay, it, it depends as well. Um, you will see here. Don't feel sick. <laughs> okay, uh, right here. Okay. It depends, okay? Uh, you can use different communication protocols for this communication between repeaters and nodes, okay? The communication modules 
are based on price, the price of communication modules are based on uh, the distances they can reach. Okay, so imagine if you have uh, if one repeater can manage five nodes, or imagine if one repeater can manage ten or even fifteen nodes. Okay, it depends on the communication protocol because the communication protocol goes farther. Okay. And the price is given mainly by the by the the communication module. Okay, if you are using Zigbee, you have different prices than if you are using A68 or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Okay, so it depends. It depends on on the configuration. But are we talking about one euro, ten cents, ten euros, hundred? Hundred euros, yeah, but not thousand of euros, less than that hundred euros. So it's quite a big in of an investment, right? Sorry? It's a big investment for a city anyway. Yeah, but uh, yeah, of course. But even the cameras as well. I mean, it's also an investment. Okay, but but for for um, for a smart tic um, a smart parking tickets or ticketing system, okay, with a ticketing system you can you can uh, have the return of of investment in in less than than two years. We have calculated. Okay, so um, knowing where the parking uh, spots. Or when knowing the status of parking spots, you can know if someone has been there by five minutes, by ten minutes, or all the all the day. Okay, and you can go there and just find them. Okay, and you can return your your investment. Okay. Any other question? No. Okay, so thank you very much for for coming, and it was a pleasure. Thank you, Jorge. And uh, the guys from Labellium will be uh, out here uh, this evening to take any further questions that you guys may have. Thank you. Uh, next up on Leonardo is Celia Boyer talking about the quality of health information in uh, disadvantaged countries. Thank you.